In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble the IKEA Mickey drawer unit, which is the companion unit to the Mickey desk. To begin, lay your box flat with the flap so that you can open it upward. I've already opened it, so you want to open this flap. And then the, uh, the sides of the, the top of the box separate. They're glued as well, you want to separate those. And then the top of the box flips open. Go ahead and remove the contents and set it so that it's easily accessible. As you can see, I've used another IKEA box to make a temporary workbench out of my sink. And here's the box of Mickey shelving unit parts. If you haven't gotten it already, I'm going to highly recommend that you get the IKEA Fix a Tool Set. Runs about eight bucks from IKEA. Very, very useful comes with the screwdriver and you get a set of bits which also has the the Allen heads, the Allen key bits which you'll need to assemble some of the furniture. If you don't have one you might want to get one of these two, a cordless screwdriver. Very handy. You'll also get an instruction manual on how to assemble this um, but if you follow my video you might not need it. So here I have the main components of the unit, the sides, set, set to the side and ready to begin. The pieces for the shelves are still in the box, I'll get to those later. Lay the two sides of the unit flat with these two slots next to each other and with the holes facing up. You can go ahead and open your bag of pieces and fasteners. Go ahead and empty those out so they're accessible. And be sure not to lose any of them. I don't think they give you extras. The first piece you're going to need are the four anchors that you're going to screw into the sides of the shelving unit. So this is the one on the left side and it goes in the outermost hole. So I'll just get it started there. And this is where your cordless screwdriver will come in handy. Two more anchors, one in the hole right here. And then same on the other side, symmetrical. And then one in the outermost hole right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and screw those in. So, next up is installation of the rails or the tracks for the drawer. There are three sizes of screws and you'll need the smallest one here. That's the smallest one, so you'll need six of those. So there I have the six of the smallest screw size. If you look closely, you'll see three holes drilled in the, in the side of the unit. The side of this wall. So there are your three holes and then you have this, if you extend your track, it'll expose some holes and openings. So if you look at it, it's like a U shape and you're looking for the hole that's at the bottom of the U right there. Or it's a C shape from this direction. So, but inside, toward the, uh, the bend in the U, you'll want to use that hole, this hole, and then you'll have to adjust your track 
to expose the last hole. Again, it's the same shape. You can't see the entire U shape, but you'll want to use that hole that's to the left. So test your screw in the hole just to make sure it's the right one. And you should be able to start it. And if you can start it, it's the right one. So now I'm going to put the track in place, line up the hole with the hole where it goes. The one that's in the bottom of the U. Go ahead and get it started. I'm not going to screw it all the way in. I'm going to get the other two in first. And for the one in the middle. Again, same position in that configuration. You want the hole that's farthest to the left. It's a little bit tricky to get started. Again, not all the way in yet. Now I have to reposition the track so I can see the other holes, like so. Now I can go ahead and tighten it. There we go. And the other two. There we go. Now you repeat for the other side. It's symmetrical, so same configuration. Now you're going to choose the hole that's farthest to the right at the bottom of the U. Same configuration, but uh, flipped. The stopper goes to, uh, next to this groove here, and then it extends out that way. I'm going to go ahead and extend it. There's my hole. I line it up with this hole here in the bottom of the U. Lining up the holes. But not all the way down, not all the way in. And now I need to slide this back a little ways so I can see the hole. And the sixth screw goes in there. I can go ahead and tighten it down. And tighten the other two. Next, from your assortment of fasteners and pieces, you're going to need the middle size, the medium size screw. So here are my three screws. You're going to need this one, this one here. Not the small one and not the largest one, but the medium size. To fasten a total of six rails, you're going to need 12 of these medium size screws. So there I have 12.
The rails come in sets of two pieces and both of them have a wheel on each piece, but you can differentiate by the one that has these, you can see these tabs or flanges and this one doesn't have it, it just has the, the track. <clears throat> um, basically it's got this shape at the end, kind of a pentagonal, weird pentagonal shape. Um, but this is the one you're going to be using to fasten to the unit's walls. So go ahead and gather the six pieces that have the, the end that looks like this. As you can see, you're going to have, uh, they're oriented two ways. So one has the wheel on this side, and for the opposite side of the shelving unit, you have the wheel on the other side. So just be aware of that. So you should have three of each of these for a total of six. So when you have them all untaped, you should have six of them, three with a wheel on this side and three with a wheel on this side. And this is how the end of the piece looks, like so. Now you can go ahead and lay out the tracks on each piece, on each wall. If you notice, the, uh, the wheel is towards the bottom of the piece here, the bottom of this track. So these go on the, the left hand side, and then you're going to have the, these on the right hand side. So for each wall, the wheels are on the outermost edge. So the wheels are over here on this side. And on the right side, the wheels are all the way to the right. On each wall, you'll have six more holes for the screws to mount these rails in place. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And it's symmetrical on both sides, so six on each side. Go ahead and position the rails like so. and position it so that you can <clears throat> insert the screws into those two holes. It's a little confusing because there's so many holes in the rail, but basically you're mounting the screw through this hole next to the wheel, and then this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and lay it in place, line up the holes, now I'm ready to put some screws in. This is the medium sized screw. I'm just going to get it started, but not finish it yet. Go ahead and insert the second one. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Now for the other two rails on this side. I'm going to tighten that one. Tighten that one. There we go. So the left wall is done. Now it's basically the same procedure on the right. Go ahead and line them up. And you're going to be using this hole here, right next to the wheel and also this one, second from the end. And just line up the holes.
excuse me, that's Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm not tightening them all the way yet. Just getting them started. In case you were wondering, this is the bottom of the unit. You can tell it's got holes for the wheels. And this is the top. You can see where you can, you're going to bolt the, the top of the unit to it, to the walls. So th this is the bottom of the, the wall here. Next, you want to grab the bottom panel. This is the basically the, the bottom of the unit. Looks like this, it's not finished on two of the sides, and it has a bottom that looks like this. You'll need four of the wooden pegs. If you look care carefully at the, the bottom piece of the unit, the base, you're going to have two holes on, on the uh, sides. Uh, one is for the anchor. That's not where the wooden peg goes. The wooden peg goes into the one next to it. So, and same on this side. Like so, like so. If it's difficult to get these pegs in, you can tap it gently with a hammer, but not too far. Go ahead and turn the bottom piece around and insert the pegs on the on this side here. That was easy. That one's not so easy. There we go. Now the next step is to mate the bottom piece to the walls and you're going to need the anchor locking mechanisms. Uh, basically it's a type of screw that secures the anchor in place and you need the large ones. You need four of them. Not the small ones but the large ones. They look like this versus the small one which looks like that. You need the larger ones. You're also going to need a Phillips screwdriver for this. Don't use your uh, cordless screwdriver for this. You just use a regular screwdriver. Now the orientation is a little tricky but basically follow the grooves where you're going to have your back plate. Uh, there's the grooves on each of the walls and then there's one on the base piece. <clears throat> And you, you want to make sure that those grooves line up. So it's going to go like this. Get your anchor. To make this properly, you need the pegs to go in the holes and then the anchors to go in the, the hole right next to it, like so. Cooperative. There we go. Once you get everything lined up, you need to tap it a little bit.
Now I'm going to rotate this wall on the bottom so I can mount the other wall. Kind of running out of space here. If you have a large workbench, that's ideal. If you don't, you'll just have to improvise like I'm doing. There we go. The next step is to take your four anchor screws and go ahead and secure your anchors. Keep rotating it until it locks into place. And there are four of these. The next piece to install is the back plate. It has a finished side and an unfinished side. The unfinished side faces inward, the finished side faces outward. two grooves and then slide it into place. And it should fit like so. Now I'm going to set this on the floor so it's easier to film it so you can see what I'm doing. On the top of the unit, you'll have four holes on each wall. On the very top, you need to put wooden pegs into the innermost holes. Not the outer holes, but the innermost. The outermost holes are for the anchors. Next you're going to take the top of the unit and lay it upside down so that the unfinished surface is laying up. You don't need four of the anchors. So four of these guys. Remember the pegs when it the, the pegs go in the innermost holes, so the anchors go in the outermost hole. I'll just get it started there. Outermost hole for the anchors. I'm just going to get it started. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down. Now you can go ahead and put the, the top of the unit on. Uh, make sure the groove is facing the back and lines up with the, the back plate. 
groove in the back plate. There are two sizes of anchor screws, a small one and a large one. You're going to pick the larger one, you need four of these. So you should have these four large ones. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the unit so you can see how to insert the anchor screws. You'll want to use a Phillips head screwdriver for this to insert the anchor screws. And it goes just above the rail. There we go. Keep turning it until it locks in place. And there's one at the bottom next to the base plate, or sorry, the back plate. Like so. And then, same on the other side. Twist it until it locks into place. And one next to the back plate. There we go. Now flip the unit so it's upside down. The next step is to insert, there are four tubes which will <clears throat> house your pins for your wheels. So you need to insert those tubes into the bottom of the unit. The orientation is like this. One in each corner. And you'll need a hammer for this. These are pretty tough to get in by hand. If you don't want wheels, um, you may not want to assemble these and, and actually put the pins in place because they click and I don't know if they unclick or unfasten. I guess we're going to find out because this is supposed to click into place. I don't think it comes out. So be advised. Permanent wheels if you put them in place. I do want wheels on mine so I'm going to go ahead and put mine on. That's not too bad. Just a slight amount of pressure. Actually, I do hope they come out because I just realized, yeah, they do come out. Uh-oh. If you have the fix a tool set, you'll be able to remove these stubborn pins. There we go. The wheels that have locks or brakes on them go on the front. So that was the final step to assemble the shell of the Mickey shelving unit. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over upright. I guess it has its brakes on. Now the brakes are off. There we go. Rolls very nicely. Now it's time to assemble the drawers. So go ahead and take those pieces out of the box. So now I have all of the pieces stacked on my temporary workbench. Now we're going to assemble the upper three drawers. You're going to need the piece that looks like this, the finished piece with two holes and one groove, or sorry, four holes, two on each side and one groove. And you're going to need two of the anchors for each drawer. The anchors are screwed into the hole that is furthest away from the groove. I'm going to get it started there. And on the other side, just get it started. There's the finished piece. Now we're going to mate the sides of the drawer with the front of the drawer and the sides are going to be these pieces that are the narrowest and the, also the longest. They look like this. So that's the side of this drawer. You're going to need one wooden peg for each side, and I find it's easier to go ahead and mount them in the front of the drawer. Like so. So the orientation of these pieces is that the hole faces outward. This hole here faces outward, so like so, because that's where the um, anchor screw is going to go. Go ahead and turn it around, and then the hole faces outward. So here's where we are. We have the sides in place. Now you're going to need your anchor screws. These are the smaller ones, the only ones that are left now. You'll need two for each drawer. Using a regular Phillips screwdriver, go ahead and insert your anchor screws. Twist them clockwise until they lock into place. Do the same for the other side, like so. Since there are four drawers, there, you're going to have four bottoms. Um, the one we're assembling now, <coughs> assembling now is the smaller drawer, so there are three of them. So you're going to have three drawer bottoms that are the same, so pick one of those. and the unfinished side faces downward and fit it into the groove now you're going to take the back of the drawer which looks like this and fit the groove into the bottom of the drawer let me rotate it first so you can see it. So the groove is mated with the bottom of the drawer. And 
all these pieces should fit together like so. Now take two of the plastic pegs and you're going to drive one into this hole on each side. I'm just going to get it started. And there's one on the other side. Now we're to the part where you need to install the rails. So as you, as you see, there are three of each side. So grab one pair. All right, there's two ends to the drawer, right? There's the front end, which is your colored end, and the rear, which is the white. Now the wheel is right next to the white end. And your flanges or tabs are going to be on your the base or the bottom of your drawer, like so. And you should have holes that line up on either side, like so. To affix the rails, you're going to need the medium-sized screw, so this guy here. Not the small one, not the large one, but the medium size. You'll need two for each rail, or four for each drawer. The holes lined up on your rail, you can go ahead and insert the screws. Oops. I'm not going to screw it in all the way just yet. Get this one started as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and Finish it off, tighten it up. And now rotate it. Put the other rail in place with the wheel towards the white, the white end of the drawer. So this one's a little tricky. Now I have a finished drawer, and it inserts like so. There we go. Now I'm going to construct two more drawers just like that. I'm not going to repeat it on video. Just do the same steps again. So now you should have three drawers complete. These are the three smaller drawers. Now on to the big drawer. Now take the large drawer, the front panel, and orient it with the groove away from you. As you can see, there are four holes on either side. You're going to take your 
four anchors and screw those into the hole that's closest to you. And then the third hole, so skip one and then the next, insert it into the third. And the same over here. Go ahead and find the sides to the drawer and have those ready. Instead of inserting the <clears throat> wooden peg into the side, I'm going to insert it into the front of the drawer. You should have four wooden pegs remaining, so go ahead and insert those. Okay, so the orientation is a little tricky on the sides of this drawer, uh, but you'll see there's a series of holes on both sides. Look for the largest two holes, locate those, and that faces outward. So it's going to rotate like this, and you see you have your groove here for your uh, bottom of your drawer, and that's going to line up with the groove on the front of your drawer, like so. There we go. And then same with the other side. So your uh, <clears throat> two large holes are going to face outward. And those are where your anchor screws go. Like so. You should have four anchor screws remaining. These are the small ones. Now we're going to go ahead and put those in. Twist it until it locks into place. Twist until it locks. And twist and lock. Now it's time to insert the bottom of the drawer. The uh, white side faces up and the unfinished side faces down. And these will go in the grooves on either side of the drawer. Now it's time to install the back of the drawer. And the groove goes against the bottom of the drawer. It fits in the snaps into place like that. The next step is to insert four plastic pegs and that will secure the back of the drawer to the rest of the drawer to the sides.
Next is installation of the pin for the fifth wheel on this unit. So here's the pin with it's uh, welded to an L bracket. You can see it's an L shape. And this goes right here. You'll need three screws, two of the large screws, and then there's a specialty unique screw all by itself. It's a long one. You'll need those three. The long screw goes on the top, or actually the underneath of the drawer. But in, in this orientation, we'll say it's the top. And your two large screws go here. So I have the Mickey shelving unit turned on its back. Uh, there's one thing you have to do in order to mount the rails on the bottom drawer. You're going to have to pull out the, uh, the rail that goes into the track here, like so. There's a white plastic lever. You press down on that and that releases the rail from the track. And do that for the opposite side as well. The lever's on the side facing away from the camera, but basically the same thing, you press it up and it comes out. So I'm keeping my rails uh, on the same side from which they came out so I can keep the orientation the way it was and make sure I put it together properly. Before I mount the rails, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and mount the, uh, install the wheel on the front of the drawer. There we go. Now we're looking at the front of the lower drawer, the largest drawer, and we're going to mount the rail on the left side. So it's going to go along here. Getting the orientation is a little confusing. So if you have your bottom drawer oriented like this with the wheel on the right side, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have your plastic lever and it's oriented that way. And then you have this at the very back and then the end with this tab is at the very front. And now you can go ahead and insert your three screws when you line up the holes. And they're lined up. You should have six screws left. They're the small ones. There's going to be three for each rail. I'm just getting them started, not all the way in, until I get the third one in, and then I'll tighten it down. So finished, it should look like this. With your lever oriented that direction. The end with the gap there goes to the back. The end with the tab faces the front. And your lever is oriented like this.
getting them started. There is some additional hardware that I'm not going to use or show you how to install, but these pieces uh, are for the uh, hanging file folders if you're going to use those. And there's a couple of racks for that. It's pretty straightforward to install. So to install the lower drawer, I have the Mickey on its back. And basically you line up each of the rails on each side so that they're going into the channels. There's two channels on each side. And just slide it, let it slide down into place. And there we go. So that's it, and now your Mickey drawer unit is complete.